zucchini is, is a great vegetable. It's very healthy for you. On the Nouvelle score that we use here at Food City, um, it is very, very high. Um, I believe it's in the upper 90s or 100. It's, I need to look that up. Um, but it is great. Um, it has, it's very versatile. You can put it in cakes. Uh, you can use it as a meat. You can fry it, bake it, grill it, um, shred it, dice it, keep it whole, whatever you like. Uh, yes, it's very good. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of soups and stews. There's a. Um, in fact, I've got a really good. Uh, it's a, called a, fre a fresh garden stew, and you use zucchini in it. I believe Olive Garden every once in a while put zucchini in some of their some of their uh, soups. Um, we're going to do a raw zucchini tonight, and we're going to do a cooked zucchini tonight, and they have two totally different flavors. All right, we're going to start the skillet tomatoes and zucchini. And you're thinking, I don't know, but this turns out to be a beautiful recipe. In fact, at the end, I put mine, when I got it almost completely done, I put it in a casserole dish. Or if you're at home, you can serve it straight out of the skillet. Um, but it's a really pretty recipe. Because when you first start cooking, you're thinking, I don't know about this. Well, I've melted two tablespoons of butter in a skillet. I've got the skillet warm. I've already sliced my zucchini. We take two small zucchini and slice them. Super easy, just wash and slice. Um, and I took one medium onion and sliced that. And I'm gonna pour that down in the skillet. And we sliced quite a few zucchini today and I think my assistant got a little wild with the zucchini. So this is gonna take, you cook the zucchini and onions. It's gonna take just a little while to cook that. Just kind of stir it up real good. All right, let's get the butter coated around them just a little bit. We're gonna get those going. All right, I've already sliced my tomatoes and we've got basil. That's in, if it's not lemon, it's basil. I'm always putting in things. Um, we have basil tonight. At, I put a little bit more than it calls for. It needs just a little bit more. It says a fourth of a teaspoon. I put probably an eighth of a cup, you know, somewhere eighth to a fourth of a cup. Well, maybe not quite that much, uh, but a couple of teaspoons full. Can't never get enough basil. In fact, I've got a cookie recipe we're going to do one week that's a lemon basil cookie. Kind of sounds a little gross, but it is really good. It is really good. Uh, I didn't tell my children what was in it till after the fact for obvious reasons. Good evening. All right, we're just getting started. All right, here we go. Okay, we've got this going now. We're gonna let this cook just a little bit. Cause that's gonna take, sometimes it takes 10 to 15 minutes, of course, to cook zucchini. We've got this going pretty good. Question? Yes, ma'am. Why, why do you not have a lid on top of that? Well, you could, uh, just because. <laughs> it would, it would stay, it would steam fast. I'm really, trying to, uh, even though it's just a little bit of butter, kind of give it a crispier texture, more than a steam texture tonight. Um, it may even say, no. Um, but I, it, it makes it, tends to make it just a little crispier. You can do it with a lid and it will cook faster. You're right, but I'm, I'm wanting it to brown just a little bit more that way than if I put a lid on it. Now we're gonna work on it. We're gonna go back to our skillet zucchini and tomatoes. Okay, I think we just about got this zucchini done. Do what? No. No onion this time. Can you believe it? It would. It would be really good. It would taste really good. And with the tarragon, it would be really good. All right, we're gonna go back to our skillet zucchini and tomato recipe. All right, now we're gonna add two medium tomatoes sliced and we're gonna add our basil. Just a minute. And it doesn't matter if you tear the tomatoes up because that's kind of what's gonna happen. You can do it real pretty, but it. For the most part, once they start cooking, it's going to 
tear it up just a little bit. Uh, we're going to add some garlic salt. A half a teaspoon. Is a teaspoon here? And we're going to use a dash of pepper. And when I say a dash, I put it all the way across. <laughs> As you know, I don't cook to an exact. Now we're going to cook this till this is tender. Till the tomatoes are tender. And that's about somewhere about five more minutes while it's cooking. Yes, you could. That would be good. Uh, Roma tomatoes would be good. But actually, you know, I'm usually big on Roma tomatoes and the Campari tomatoes. Um, but these tomatoes, it kind of, they break up, break down a little bit, and they have a little bit more uh, juice to them. And for once, the juice really helps the recipe. You know, sometimes when you're taking fresh tomatoes, they're, they're a little bit messy and they kind of start falling apart. Well, you kind of want this to fall apart. What was that tomato you said, the white Campari. That's my favorite. And we've had those on sale. We had those on sale on Midnight Madness recently and uh, they're usually about five dollars a container and they they were i think 99 cents c-a-m-p-a-r-i they're just a good tomato it's more like an italian tomato um you know there's there's just it's it's kind of closely to a uh like a roma tomato you know it, it's shaped just a little bit differently but there's, you know, there, there's so many different kinds of tomatoes. You know, the taste, the textures, the size. Uh, some are easier to grow than others. You know, uh, some are more resilient. When you're getting a lot more of these that are a little bit strange, uh, that crosses, you know, like the stripy tomatoes and some of those, they're a little bit harder to grow. And of course, at Food City, we call those heirloom tomatoes. And, uh, you know, people sometimes will question the price, but if you think about how hard they are to grow, then you, and if you've ever tried to raise them, you know uh, why you're paying that price. What's easy and good to grow? Um, you, all t you all tell, you probably don't know just as much as I do. German tomatoes are easy to grow, better boys, big boys, all those are easy, easy to grow. Um, I've got what, the beef steak. That's, I was trying to think of it, beef steak. Uh, some of the little Tommy Toe tomatoes are easy. You can put those in a pot. Excuse me, I thought I was going to sneeze. I'm sorry. Um, are the Germans the one that look really the, weird? They're kind of pink. Um, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, these ladies probably know more about tomatoes than I could ever tell you. <laughs> They probably put up more tomatoes than I can ever tell you. <laughs> okay, this is just about all the way tender. We're gonna cook it just a couple of more minutes. Turn this up just real quick. And you can see, see how the tomatoes have broke down just a little bit and uh, they've, cooked, they've cooked through. And you could even take, if you're in a hurry and you were trying to get this recipe done, uh, you could shred up the zucchini or cut it very, very fine and cook, you have to cook just within minutes, you know, within minutes. And uh, you, could ha you could have this to the table in no time. Uh, but this is a really easy recipe. And uh, once you get uh, the cheese and the croutons on, it, it turns into a different look. All right. And while we've got that going, we're gonna Get that going. I'm going to put ours in a casserole dish. And it is very hot. I'm going to get my. I've got croutons here. You can use garlic and butter, cheddar and garlic, plain croutons, whatever you like. Um, I actually crush some of them up a little bit in the bag, about a cup of croutons, give or take. Um, I've got those, and then you use doo -doo -doo, a cup of cheese. And I thought I'd done shredded it up, cupped it up. I 
don't know where I put my cheese. <laughs> it's here. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. And you can use as much croutons or as much cheese as you like. That's just a, just a brief estimate. estimate. Um, I think I have a garlic and butter and a, I think a cheddar and garlic. Let's see. This other one I used is a cheese and garlic. Okay, I'm just putting mine in a casserole dish to serve. You can serve this with the croutons and the uh, cheese. Um, straight out of the skillet, one skillet dinner. But for presentation wise and time wise, I shake the, I've crushed the croutons. And I'm gonna add just a little bit extra. And this is mozzarella cheese. You could even buy the uh, Italian cheese blend would be really good. Um, has Parmesan and Romano. Uh, those, those would be a good mix. She has actually went to Gatlinburg today. She's been working. I think she works five or six days this week. So <laughs> she works for Food City in Church Hill. So I will. Now I'm now you can slide this straight on into the oven, but actually within minutes this will start melting. But on top of the sto stove, obviously it will melt very, very quickly on it. And we're gonna get that out. Let me show you what it looks like. I had one of our employees had to have a sample, but this is what it looks like when it comes out. So it's a real it's a really pretty casserole.